All right, welcome to the channel, guys. I've been late, I know. I haven't been doing anything recently, but actually, I haven't been doing anything online. However, I have been taking care of my little one, which is pretty much a lot to ask for, so I've been busy. But there have been a lot of things going on, such as the Bigote Master, etc., etc., etc. I haven't even had the chance to touch, see, smell that thing. But there are lots of videos online. I'm about to do a quick analysis of these reviews. Let's look at Alien Rides to start. Once again, thanks for joining the channel. Subscribe if you haven't. Let's get into this. First impression, the wheel looks sick. Like, I'm sorry, ergonomically, the wheel is beautiful, okay? Compared to the S20 or now S22, they actually have their own categories, but the S22, I feel, is a lot more going on. Um, not that that's a bad thing per se, um, in terms of quality build from what I've seen in previous videos, uh, it seems to be a lot more rugged than this uh, wheel right here. Um, but just in terms of looks, it's A plus, man. What I like about it so far is that he's not really preempting the jumps. Um, whenever he reaches an object, he just goes right over it. He's not like prepping. If on my wheel, MSP, EXN, whatever, I'm always prepping. I'm always looking for a branch or a rock or something like that. And this is not specific to the Bigode Master. Obviously, this is specific to any uh, suspension wheel where you don't really have to prep, it seems. Now, personally, I haven't had the time to write any uh, suspension wheel for any length of time, so I, you can't really take my word for it. But just by looking at what he's doing, based on what I've seen on many other rides, it's very encouraging to see that, you know, at least for number one, I don't have to worry about bending my knees, which I'm very accustomed to right now. I imagine um, the main difference would be dampening, so how much of that impact the shock can take based on your weight. So he's a very light guy. Pretty sure he's not really too concerned about that right now because he's very light. That looked like a little struggle right there, I have to say. I'm not sure if that has to do with him or just, you know, the wheel in general, but in that short clip, which is just a clip to be fair, um, he was struggling. That's an insane lean. Once again, proving my point, he's a very light guy. So that lean was pretty impressive though. What's up YouTube, Alien Rides here. And today we are taking a look at Bigode's latest suspension wheel, the Master. I mean, just look at it, man. It looks fantastic. The pads, the seat, that bottom piece right there, which I'm not sure what it is, which I thought was metal, but it's actually rubber as well. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Those pedals look very beefy, holy smokes. This is a very good looking wheel. A brand new design for the pads, the chassis, and the suspension. The Master is a sight to behold, but Bigode has never forgotten about the pursuit of performance, with this wheel running at a whopping 134 volts. I can't wait to check it out, so let's take a look. Subscribe and let's ride. The Master is the first production wheel to have a peak voltage of 134.4 volts. That's 32 battery cells and serial. It's a ton of power, but if you do use all of that available power, you might find yourself eating battery quickly. In our range test, we got about 42 miles of range at high speeds. Those are the most fun miles. 42 miles of range at high speeds. That's impressive, guys. You will ever travel on. But something I wish that they would mention is their weight. Um, maybe he'll mention it a little bit later. But in this category of you know PEVs, it's not like a scooter or a car or anything like that where, you know, your weight doesn't really count for much. Here it does, because we only have one wheel, lean too much in that thing, you're gonna lose range, you're gonna lose a bunch of things and possibly cut out. So um, it, it's, it would be very important to mention weight. On wheel though, there are three different battery options available at Alien Rides, and you can read up more on those options on our website. In this video, we were testing the Samsung 50E version with 2,400 watt hours. 
For the motor, the Master uses a C38 torque motor. It's the same size as the motor in the Hero, the R. 2,400 watt hours. Now keep that in mind. The S22 is 2,200 watt hours from what I understand, from what I remember. Now, if you can get 42 mile range out of that type of battery, I mean, that's, that's a lot. Once again, I would have loved to know the weight um, of the rider. But if you look at the S22, um, it's a lot more metal. If you look at the master, there's a lot less going on. There's a lot of foam. Um, presumably it would be lighter, right? Which would make sense. But I think the architecture of how the engineering is behind the S22 and behind how Gotway does their thing. I mean, 200 watt hours more on the master couldn't make that much of a difference unless there was some true engineering involved. And I feel like Gotway um, seems to have that down packed. You know what I mean? RS and the EXN, but it has way more power due to the higher voltage and larger magnets. We've been able to go zero to 40 miles per hour in 3.3 seconds. Larger magnets. Hmm. It'd be interesting to compare these two, the magnets of the S22 and the magnets of the uh, master, but that's a distinguishing factor as well. Once again, to my point uh, where engineering is concerned. It has a top speed faster than the old Speed King, the EXN, and far more torque. Simply faster than the EXN. Wow, you know, I haven't even hit the top speed of the EXN. Um, I haven't had the need to, but um, I have pushed it to 48 miles an hour and um, felt nothing like in terms of it trying to give up on you or anything like that. It was just beautiful. 48 miles an hour, I barely even felt it. And I did it in a very short period. So um, the way I have my wheels set up uh, with, you know, pedal tilted back for a lot more torque riding in hard mode, etc. cetera. Um, uh, 48 miles an hour in a short distance was very impressive, very impressive. So if this is faster than the EXN, that's even more impressive. But the EXN has a 2,700 watt hour battery, which is very my type of thing, you know what I mean? Being able to ride very fast and not worry about range is a good thing. It's the best of both torque and speed 100 volt wheels. Now, let's take a look at some of the features that make up the master. So the master comes with black pads by default. I mean, just look at that thing, guys. It freaking looks amazing. Like, holy smokes. Like, now I have seen some other videos out there with the master uh, bare, completely bare with no side pads or anything. Um, and it doesn't look as sexy. But with the Clark thing, uh, the Clark protective sh uh, thing that he has, um, it does look a little better. Um, but if I could modify that pad to work for me, that would be icing on the cake because the pads look amazing. Like it, it adds to the look of the wheel, you know, um, if only it was a little bit more ergonomic for most riders, just from the short reviews I've seen so far regarding from Ronin rides, etc., from almost everyone, you know, the pad seems to be a problem. And that's typical of any manufacturer pads for the most part, really. So it's not a surprise. We'll be able to upgrade to either red or blue pads in the future, maybe other colors as well. But for now, you're probably gonna have black pads. It comes with the top pad here, which protects the top. You don't need bumpers. And it's also gonna act as a seat. You've got the side pads here, which can act as power pads with acceleration and braking. And you've also got these bottom pads here as well. So overall, I think the pads just add a lot to the look of the design. And protect like I just said, it adds a lot to the look. Yes, absolutely. The thing looks good, man. But maybe not practical 100%, um, but it looks great. Action as well. They are a little bit stiff, though. It kind of feels like a well-done steak. I wouldn't eat a well-done steak. I also wouldn't eat these pads. But maybe you could add some softer padding to it, like these, more like a medium, mediumer steak. Put them on your pads, and that would add some more comfort. That's what I was thinking, because I want to keep that look. That's a beautiful look. Um, if I could just modify the pads a little bit um, to kind of like what Law did, except with the pads. I would like to leave the pads and add more beefiness to it, either in the front or the back, and even where the instep of your foot is so that you can jump. And um, just keep the look, because it looks gorgeous. So the kickstand's in the back here. You just kind of lean it back to rest on the kickstand. And it's pretty stable. It's wow, right from the hero. That kickstand is beautiful. Now, from as far as I know, uh, this is the best kickstand, okay? Best, best. I mean, the uh, S22, S20 
has a uh, kickstand, but it's more of like an after, it, I wouldn't say it's an afterthought. It's just not as sturdy. You know what I mean? Um, I can't speak to it a hundred percent. I saw another review out there um, on a much smaller channel where he did crash it and, you know, it kind of like torqued the, um, uh, the back part of the, uh, the kickstand, which was very disappointing, very disappointing. But um, the hero seems to so far have the best design and implementation of that, because not only do you have the kickstand, you have part of the body that pretty much acts as a, a um, how do you say, kind of like reinforcement for the kickstand. Whereas this, there's no reinforcement at all. It's just a kickstand coming around the tire. Um, but either way, it looks fantastic. Um, I created a video, don't crash your wheel. So it's probably a hard thing to do, but something to look into. It's not really gonna go anywhere unless you kick it. <laughs> don't kick your master, it voids your warranty. The Be Good Master comes with these honeycomb pedals. They're quite big and very comfortable if you have larger feet, spiked so you have more control and great for off-roading so your feet don't leave the pedals as much. And overall, I find that they just allow me to ride much longer without foot fatigue because they're so big. I like these pedals quite a lot. And Foot fatigue is a thing, guys. Even for me as a rider, someone who's been riding since 2016, foot fatigue is still a thing. I have ways of getting around it, but it's definitely still a thing. Simply stay out for friction. <laughs> have to say I've been saying this guy's a very light guy but <laughs> the way he's handling this massive wheel is very impressive obviously he has skills with other wheels but just to see such a small guy handle such a big wheel is is encouraging okay um yes it is very encouraging because he's throwing it on those jumps like it's no big deal it's beautiful It says a lot about him, but it also says a lot about the wheel, that it's very maneuverable. Um, I don't see him forcing it to go, you know, in the direction that he prefers it to go. I'm not sure what type of tire he has on right now, but it's very encouraging to see him ride it with such ease. Okay, so from this angle, it looks like a road tire. There is a screen on top of- I'm sorry, not a road tire. Uh, off-roading tire. The Master, much like the Hero, it's the same screen, I believe. It shows you everything you need to know, the current battery level. That screen is beautiful. Uh, apparently, it's the same design from the Hero, which is awesome. A um, few things, though. Um, if you end up riding in the rain, I could see some rain chilling in there. It looks like a cup, you know what I mean? So the rain could definitely sit in that little uh, section right here, obviously. Um, not a big deal because I imagine a lot of people probably don't ride in the rain. How fast you're going, riding mode, temperature, and odometer, I believe. It's a really bright and sunny day, so it's a little bit harder to see the screen. And I usually don't look down, but it is there if you need it. The trolley. I love that trolley handle right in the center, right dead center. That's beautiful. Now, I have seen some reviews out there, especially from um, Zen Lee, uh, where he stated that, you know, um, the handles could be a little bit stronger. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a tough one, um, sturdy or, or whatever, but uh, the, the positioning of it is pretty interesting. Also, another thing he noted was that it pops up. So hmm, maybe we could fix that somehow. I don't know. The handle is right here in the middle of the top <clears throat> unicycle. Press the button, it extends to there. Fully extended is out here. To lift it up. And it's right in the center of the unit. It's quite comfortable. You just can't get, man, that, that wheel looks so good. Oh my gosh. It just looks so simple, so plain, so neatly put together. There doesn't seem to be any handles though to lift it. Hmm. So this handle is no longer the lift sensor. Instead, you just press this button a single time. Huh, that's pretty annoying. Maybe it's not annoying, but it seems annoying. Um, that you have to push a button before you freely move the wheel around. Hmm. And it's now engaged. So I usually lift behind the rear shock and I lift in front, like here. Ah, see, interesting. So that's how you have to lift it, huh? Hmm, I'm not sure how that's gonna... Hmm, 
I'm not sure how that's gonna work. And you can just pick it up that way. This flexes a little bit, but it's okay to lift up like that. And just press it again, turn it off. So let's check out the lights of the Master, and we're gonna compare it to the previous winner, the S20, and we'll see which one's better. Let's check out the Master headlight here. He's got... Off the bat, that's pretty bad. Typical two modes, on, flashing. And there's no brighter mode when you're rolling? I thought it would be brighter when you roll, but I guess it's just one brightness level. He might have to move a little bit faster, because I tried that also with my MSP. You can't just rock it uh, in order for the light to get brighter. You'll have to move it a little bit more, you know, maybe like a couple feet at a certain speed, definitely over like two miles an hour, and then it'll start to brighten up. I'm not sure if the master is the same way, but I imagine that's what he needs to do. Bubble. And now for the S20. Holy smokes, that thing is bright. I think it's pretty clear that the S20 wins in headlight. S20 on, S20 off. So the Kingsong S22 clearly has a brighter headlight, but the master is fast. By the way, the Kingsong S22 <laughs> is named the S22 because this is the killer. I killed it. This I'm really a Gotway rider. I don't really ride Got, uh, Kingsong machines. I have a 16X. And I feel like this is honestly the best wheel that King Song has ever put out, in my opinion, where torque, power, just resiliency is concerned. And um, I tried to like ride this uh, S20, as it was called before, um, like I do Gotway machines, and it just couldn't handle it. So it blew up, and now it's the S22, but I will always remember the S20. Faster. Let's see exactly how fast the master is. Props to that guy for riding at 56 miles an hour. <laughs> but again, he's a light guy. So you can't go by that. You can't look at him if you're someone who's who whatever. I mean, if you look at his stature, you can say he's about maybe 140, maybe 170 even, maybe, you know, because I can't see his build. But I can definitely take a guess and say he's definitely not 180 and uh, he's, he's under 175. I can say that just by looking at him. So... If you take that into consideration, you know, you're, you'll be safe. You can't just look at this and say, okay, I weigh 220 pounds. I can do 60 on this thing. No, no. <laughs> Speed on electric unicycles are extremely relative to your weight. Uh, it's relative to your weight. It's relative to the wind. It's relative to... Uh, the street you're riding on, the incline. If you look, he looks like he's on a flat surface. He's light, doesn't seem too windy. So there's a lot to take into consideration here. Either way, it's very impressive. The good uses the same style of suspension in the Master as he did on the Hero. It's 190. Wait a minute. What was the battery at? Because at the very end, it said it was 85. Let me go back for a second. He started here. So let's let's look at the battery percentage. That's interesting. Typically, I focus on voltage, but there's no voltage here. It's just percentage. But either way, let's let's take a look here. It's at 100% battery. And when he slows down, okay. Okay, okay. It's 87%, but um, he didn't let it rest. So the more the wheel rests, it should shoot back up to around 90 something. Interesting, but he's down to 30 miles an hour and it's still at 85%. Maybe the BMS is doing something, you know? It's taking its time to come back up because it should shoot back up. The good uses the same style of suspension in the Master as he did on the Hero. It's 190 millimeters eye to eye, and it's a huge upgrade over the Hero because they have this knob. And I love knobs. I don't know about you, but this is a great knob. It's got tons of friction to my fingers. I can turn it very easily. Quite a nice knob indeed. And this knob adjusts the dampening. So you can adjust it for off-roading or road riding, kind of whatever type of condition you're riding in. You can just simply adjust that for the ride. Overall, I think that the suspension is pretty good. You don't really need to upgrade it compared to the shock on the Hero. It just gets the job done. Recently, we posted a short about the master's speed, but what we didn't show was its insane torque. 
once again, once again, it's nice to get hyped about the torque of the master or any wheel, but he's a light guy. This is a very light guy. So take that into consideration. And what's interesting is he's a very light guy and he still looks like he's struggling. So it could be a matter of skill. It could be that he's not really an off-roader, um, a hill climber, because I expect he would be leaning into it. You know what I mean? To go up that hill. But he's a very light guy. So definitely take that into consideration. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not sure, but he is struggling. You see this? If you look at this leg, uh, the right leg, that would be his right. Yep. His right leg. Okay. Um, he's taking the wheel and the wheel is literally forcing itself on his inner thigh or his inner leg, I should say. And that's a sign that he's struggling rather than it being even or almost even going straight. Yes, it could be that because he's turning. Let me see if it's because he's turning. Yep. 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 So I take that back. He's turning. But he is still struggling though. I expected a little bit more because he's such a light guy. I expected he would just floor it up that hill and let it fall where it falls. But he did struggle. You can't ignore that. Once again, that's not to say that the wheel is a bad wheel. It could just be he's not skilled to climb up a hill uh, like that. But I don't know. Maybe it's because the hill has turns. You know what I mean? So I don't know. But that looked like a bit of struggle to me. Cool. Well, that's all we got for this episode on the Goad Master. Hope you all enjoyed it. Wow, just look at that design. He has black, the black helmet, black backpack, black shin guards, shoes, and look at that wheel, how it just matches. You know, it's very utility, you know what I mean? Technical, techie, very high tech piece of machine that I would love to get a, a hold of. But in time, I guess, we'll see. There is one in New York. Hopefully I'll be able to go test it out. Um, overall, I think he did an amazing job um, in the areas of speed and um, what else? The light, uh, demonstrating torque up the hill. That was nice, um, but it wasn't in depth. This wasn't an in depth review. It was a general review and it was well done. So I give it, I would say I give this review a B minus. Yeah, B minus for, for this review. I would love to give it a B plus, but it wasn't in depth enough. And I think he made that clear somewhere. So it's a B minus for the review. Great wheel, great reviewer. Based on what we just saw, is it a buy? I can't say, I can't say, because this, this wasn't an in-depth review. I didn't see any hard braking. I didn't see any hard acceleration. I didn't see any hard acceleration, braking, turning. I didn't see anything. But for the average rider who's going to ride, I don't expect that they would try to destroy this wheel. Someone like me, yes, I would absolutely need to destroy this wheel because I need to know that I can push it to its limit and it's going to hold up. But he did mention something about the batteries being in series. So he did say if you attempt to push this wheel too hard, you can expect to eat a lot of the battery up, uh, which says a lot about um, uh, the longevity of those cells. Um, if they are in series, they're not in parallel. Maybe one day we could do a quick video on what it means to have a battery, I'm sorry, to have a motor in, in with batteries in series versus parallel and how much torque and how much power you can expect from each configuration. Because from my understanding, parallel, you know, uh, you have pretty much batteries next to each other and you have two buses, you know, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then you have the same voltage across every cell if they're the same voltage. So if you have two volts, two volts, two volts, two volts, you have two volts. But the amp is, uh, I think, should be up. Whereas the series, you have two volts, two volts, two volts, two volts in series. That's two, four, six, eight. At the end, you have eight volts. So that's how they're able to achieve the 134 volts. Okay. So series configuration, parallel configuration, very different beasts. I would love to see what that means in real life. So 
Anyway, guys, see you on the next one.